The Canals 2020 have started in Yekaterinburg, Russia. The first round was played and in this video I would like to show you and share with you my analysis of the game Anish Giri the Dutchman against the Russian Jan Nepomirchi. Let's get into it. Giri with the white pieces and Nepomirchi with the black pieces. Knight f3, knight f6, c4, c5, knight c3, knight c6 and we get into this variation which can be reached by a lot of different move orders and can get very sharp and tactical and that's exactly what happened in this game. g3, queen b6 is a very theoretical and topical line. Knight e5 and here there are two main moves for white, bishop g2 or the move g replayed, bishop to f4. Knight fg4, it's a really weird position, really weird variation as you see, very concrete. Now suddenly black's threatening to take on f2, so white goes e3, a6 and there are a lot of strange knight placements it seems to me in this variation. a6 and white reacts with a pawn attack with an attack on a knight on the other side of the board. a takes b5, h takes g4, knight takes c4 and in this position the absolute main move is queen b3. But Giri managed to surprise his opponent early on with the move rook c1, which only has been played once before. Rook c1 has the threat of knight takes b5 and then just taking the knight on c4. Nepo replied in the right way with d5, protecting the knight, that makes a lot of sense, and b3. And here I was quite impressed. After a while of thinking, Nepo found the correct continuation bishop b4, sacrificing a piece temporarily. Black could also retreat the knight to d6 and here white could regain the pawn by taking on d6 and taking on b5, but maybe this is not too convincing after all. Maybe white has a slight push, but not too much. Alternatively, white could also play bishop d3 and just claim he has some kind of compensation, which he certainly does. So what about this move bishop b4? Pinning the knight and rook a3, this is the idea. Rook a3 hitting the knight once again. And you can see the bar is already saying black has a clear advantage, but this is not the case. And this indicates how deep the preparation was of Anish Gir, who had all of this still analyzed with his computer or with his seconds. Rook a3 hitting the knight, bishop e5 protecting the knight, f6 hitting the bishop, bishop goes to d4 and queen a5 once, atta once again attacking this knight on c3. And now white cannot really save this knight anymore if he plays a move like queen c2, then black goes e5 and the whole white position collapses. This does not work. So Giri played bishop e2, bishop takes c3 and now rook takes c3, rook takes c3 and king f1. All of this still blitzed out by Giri. Now he has sacrificed the exchange but he's hoping that he will get a lot of play with his bishops, especially the dark squared bishop on d4. And here I think Nepomeshi played a very important and strong move, at least practical speaking. He played the move b4. Black has a lot of different options. He could play b takes c4 and he also has other moves available. b takes c4 but was certainly the move Giri expected the most and certainly knew how he could continue. And after g5, the computer screams equality in all these lines, but honestly, practically speaking, it's white who's pushing, who's pressing, and black has to defend. So not an easy position to play over the board for sure. b4 kind of changes the narrative. Here, first of all, it brought Giri out of the book. Second of all, it's also, after all, equal. So it's definitely a good alternative. And third of all, as we'll see in the game, black gets the practical advantage of a strong pass pawn on the C file. So G5 was still played, E5, bishop takes C3. And this is what I was talking about. Black gets this very strong pawn on C3, which in a lot of variations is an asset and can be a threat. G takes f6, G takes f6. Another alternative, by the way, would be to just castle. Also, 
all equal as you can see but the position is anything but easy to play what is going on after all what are the trumps for both pos for both players well white has the safer king but on the other hand black has the strong pass pawn on c3 so it really comes down to concrete move to move play and here gear play queen b1 which is somewhat of an inaccuracy there were other other moves available king g2 would be a very cool and calm alternative but the move the commentators mostly expected was c takes d5 simply taking this pawn black again has many options such as queen c5 or maybe just to take this pawn on a2 maybe that's what Giri didn't like queen takes a2 also supporting the pawn queen d3 bishop d7 king g2 would be one possible continuation and it remains incredibly complex and difficult but ultimately around equal very unclear position let's see queen b1 queen b1 has several points i believe for one white is hitting this pawn h7 for the other he's stopping bishop f5 here black again has so many options d takes c4 d4 and all of them are sound queen c7 was a very logical and human move chosen by nipomyashi protecting this pawn in h7 and white cannot take on d5 anymore because then the pawn would get to c2 and he's, it's simply too strong so instead giri play queen d3 he also has a lot of moves available once again rook h4 queen c1 our alternatives but also queen d3 is fine but already you can see by the last couple of moves that white is not really pushing anymore it's actually white who's in defensive mode and b5 a nice move by nepomashi is emphasizing that even more what's the point behind b5 well you cannot take either of these pawns because then black is pushing c2 and white has to give the rook for the pawn so white has to get rid of this pawn queen takes d5 is also not recommended black plays bishop b7 and forces a trade of queens which definitely favors him because in the end game this pawn wins in strength queen takes b5 bishop c6 loses immediately queen c5 doesn't help c2 would win or also the very cute bishop g2 check winning the queen queen e6 and now the trade of queens is necessary or first you can give this check but it doesn't change anything in the end we get to this position and this pawn just decides the game white is completely lost so giri takes the pawn on c3 b takes c4 and very important move to immediately break up this pawn chain e4 and here you could see Nepomishi shaking his head in the live commentary, in the live stream. He wasn't that happy. He played d takes e4 and probably he expected here queen takes c4 and he had realized that this endgame is not offering him many chances. It should result in a draw. One sample line could go bishop g4, a4, h5 to free the rook from defending the pawn, bishop e2 trade the bishops and this rook in game is just a draw black can end up with an extra pawn here but it won't lead anywhere this is a draw giri however played rook h4 also an interesting move to wait for what for now to take these pawns later activate the rook but this is in inaccuracy and definitely makes it more difficult for white queen takes c4 was a straight straightforward way to achieve a draw bishop e6 rook takes e4 castle and here giri commits a mistake for sure bishop takes e4 looks so logical get rid of this pawn equalize the material but it's not as simple as that as we will see he should just play a move like rook h4 rook c8 rook c8 king g1 yes black keeps his extra pawn but the white pieces are well placed white has also passed pawn on the afl the black king is still open so i believe white should be able to hold this position it will be difficult for black to prove anything bishop takes c4 changes the matter it looks like white would 
just equalize and a draw is agreed in a couple of moves, but no. The bishop is in a pin on the C file and it's not easy for white to get rid of this pin. Here, he plays another mistake after which his position becomes very difficult. Queen before was necessary, but also then it's anything but easy to play this position. Queen b7 looks very tough. Bishop d3, possibly giving up the exchange here. It will be a uphill struggle as well for white. After queen b3, rook b8, however, white has to give the queen already to continue the game or this gives him the best chances. Bishop takes e6 was played. If queen a4, black can reply with bishop d7. Queen retreats to d1, bishop f5, and the rook cannot move because of rook b1, so white would need to give the exchange. And I think that black should be able to win this position sooner or later. Not quite easy because of the weak black king, but very good chances. Bishop takes e6 was played and we enter this position. Rook g8 check, king f8. Unfortunate for Giri, rook g8 check doesn't work because here in the end, king d6, rook takes c7, black has an intermediate check on b1. And well, next he takes on c7 and this is a lost endgame. Black will win sooner or later. So bishop takes b3. And white hopes to set up a fortress, but what makes it difficult for him that black has a majority of pawns here, three against two on the king side. And also, time was becoming an issue with Giri running low on time. h5. And I think rook g8 is the last mistake here that Giri made. If he can hold this position, and I'm not sure if he can objectively with best play, but the best attempt would have been something like this, rook h4, and then to bring the bishop to g2, and maybe, maybe white can hold, but honestly, I don't really fully believe it. Certainly would have made the task more difficult for Nepomish. Here, Giri did not have a lot of time, and e4, and if black can get e3 in, it's all over. So, rook d8 check, king e7, bishop d1, Queen c3, rook d5, and now we see h4, g takes h4, and black has these two pawns in the center which he just needs to get rolling. And I think here Nepomishi played a little bit too quickly and made his life a little bit more difficult. The direct f5 wasn't necessary. Queen c8 is a move suggested by the engines, which I don't fully understand. But also queen h3, or a move like queen c4, putting the queen on e2, and waiting with this with this advance until it's even stronger than in the game however objectively f5 is also winning what i don't like about it here is that white can hope to set up a fortress in this end game queen against rook but as nepo showed in the end it is no fortress and he wins anyway rook g5 if rook e5 check which first looks very good to pick up the last pawn, then black has to play a very important move here, which is queen d5. It's the only winning move. There are some important considerations here. If white is able to play rook e3, it's a draw, even if he does not have these pawns anymore, h4 and a2, because he can just go back and forth on e3 and g3 and there's nothing black can do. However, if the pawn is forced to f3, this position is lost. Because here we will get to a situation where black puts the queen on f1 and then gives a check on g1. That's why the pawn, with the pawn on the second rank it's a draw, with the pawn on the third rank it's lost because the queen can enter and disrupt the white pieces. Rook g5 was played, Giri tried a different approach but in the end it didn't help. However, there were still some tricks to be avoided and one of them we see here. What do you think? Should black take the pawn on h4 now or should he play something else and why? When I saw this position I was really surprised to see Nepomishi not take the pawn and play queen h5 but taking the pawn 
would be indeed a very bad mistake and suddenly it's a draw because white is able to put the king on e2 and then to swing back and forth with the rook and it's a draw. If black allows the king to end up on e2, it's a draw. He cannot push the king away anymore and it's a fortress indeed. So Nepo was aware of that and did not allow the king to get over to e2. So this is the last difficulty that black has to overcome. Once again, queen takes h4, big mistake, the king comes over, it's a draw. However, if the king stays on g2 and black wins the pawn, it's a win as we will see. Queen d5, king g1. So let's see how Nepo does it. He brings the king closer and he has to put black, has to put white into Zugzwang. All right, the rook has to move, king comes back. And now rook h3 and king g6. Now the king is approaching the h pawn. That's the way to win. Rook g3, king h5, rook h3, king queen b1. And this is the position of Zugzwang. White cannot keep this position as it is. If rook h1, for example, there's queen b7, threatening e3, and everything is falling apart. So Giri gave up the pawn, but now the king has not made it to e2, and it's a win, and why we will see in the game. The king comes over, runs to d4, and this is why black needs the pawn on e4. Without the pawn it's a draw, with the pawn it's a win because of this move, queen d3, offering the queen and allowing the king to cross the third rank. And Giri resigned. There's nothing for white to do here. Wow. What a start to determine for Jan Nepomeshi. First being kind of all prepared, but he found the right moves and he outcalculated Giri. Giri made some inaccuracies. He should have forced the draw more or less with Queen takes c4 when he had a chance, when he had a chance, and then taking the pawn later with Bishop takes c4 ended up being a mistake and bringing him into a lot of trouble. And Nepomeshi, you could say he had some hiccups, but in the end he never let the win go and he managed to convert and he was aware of these different fortresses and made sure that Giri could not attain them. And so Nepomeshi starts with a win. What do you think about the game? Let me know in the comments and also make sure to check out my other game analysis of the first round, which was already full of excitement, the game between Ding Liren and Wang Hao. We see each other very soon. Until then, bye.